today we're going to talk about cyst so this class is a brief introduction to the definition and the various types of cysts so what is the definition what is a cyst a cyst is a collection of fluid in a sac lined by epithelium or endothelium so it usually presents as a swelling which is well localized non tender soft and fluctuant and in some cases depending on the contents of the cyst or the nature of the fluid it may be transilluminant for example certain cysts like ranula cystic hygroma hydrocele epididymal cyst are known to be transilluminant now the word is derived from the greek word which means bladder now it can be broadly classified into two types true cyst and false cyst or otherwise known as pseudo cyst so that is one way of classifying a cyst so what is a true cyst that means it is a cyst as per the definition they are lined by epithelium or endothelium the fluid may be serous or mucoid in some cases it can be toothpaste like pultaceous material which is the case of dermoid cyst and epidermoid cyst a second variety i told you was false cyst or pseudo cyst these are cysts which do not have epithelial linings so they may be broadly further sub classified into exudation cysts or degeneration cyst exudation cysts refer to cysts that develop from exudation of fluid and are limited to certain anatomical spaces for example a pseudo pancreatic cyst which is usually seen following acute pancreatitis bursa vaginal hydrocele these are not true cyst now the second variety is degeneration cyst these are cysts that develop following degeneration in the center of a malignant tumor now this classification does not include all types of cysts so we have another classification based on the origin so we classify them into congenital and acquired so this picture here shows the pictorial representation of a true cyst you can see the epithelial lining and the cyst fluid and this is the example i mentioned to you it's another one of the examples of pseudo cyst so we have an an abdominal organ known as pancreas there's a fluid collection next to the pancreas following pancreatitis then slowly it forms a granulation tissue wall around it and eventually it forms a pseudo cyst as it matures so congenital cysts and acquired cysts so under congenital cysts you have three variants sequestration cyst these develop at the line of closure of embryonic clefts due to burial of dermal cells in the fusion line classically includes a sequestration dermoid now certain other congenital swellings are iso are uh, which are cystic for example cystic hygroma branchial cyst may also have some sequestration involved but they are also at present included in this category or they can be put into a category known as others which are also congenital cysts the second variety is tubulo embryonic cysts these are congenital cysts which develops in the tracts of an ectodermal tube like thyroglossal cyst post anal dermoid cyst the third variety is cyst of embryonic remnants these cysts develop from embryonic tubules or ducts that norm- normally disappear like a cyst of the uracus or a uracal cyst cyst of the vitreo intestinal duct cyst of the wolfian duct like that so these are the uh, varieties of congenital cysts now we'll go into the category of acquired cysts acquired cysts include retention cysts so this is a type of cyst which develops due to retention of secretions of a gland due to obstruction of its duct classic example is a sebaceous cyst which has a duct which opens near the hair follicle and when blocked it results in retention of the secretions within the sebaceous gland resulting in a sebaceous cyst 
Other examples include the breast cyst, mucus cyst of the lip, pancreatic cyst, parotid cyst. All these structures have ducts which uh, lead the secretion out. So, a block in the duct can result in a cystic dilatation of the gland. The second variety is distension cysts. These cysts develop from distension of a normal acne or follicle of a gland. For example, the thyroid cyst, ovarian cyst, lymphatic cyst. So here there are normal SNA within the structure and when they distend due to increase in the secretions within the SNA, it results in a cystic swelling. Now third variety is exudation cyst. This develops due to exudation of fluid into an anatomical space. I have already mentioned it previously. Includes vaginal hydrocele, bursa and a pseudo pancreatic cyst. Degeneration cyst is due to degeneration at the center of a malignant tumor. Cystic tumors. These include tumors that are cystic in nature like the ovarian cyst adenoma, dermoid cyst of the ovary. Implantation dermoid is an acquired form of dermoid cyst. It develops when the squamous epithelium of the skin is indriven by a penetrating wound like a thorn prick or a needle prick. Traumatic cysts include hematoma in muscles or fascia which resolves into a cyst. A parasitic cyst includes cysts that are formed due to parasitic infestation like the hydatid cyst, cysticercosis. Now some of these cystic conditions will be dealt with the detail in other topics. So this here is a sequestration dermoid and this particular one is an external angular, angular dermoid. This is another dermoid, sequestration dermoid in the scalp, in the line of fusion of the scalp bones. Now here this is a tubulodermoid cyst or otherwise known as a thyroglossal cyst. You can see the midline swelling and here is the thyroglossal tract. So if there is a patent part which can happen in any of these locations. The most common location is a subhyoid location. So you can develop a thyroglossal cyst. This will be dealt with in detail in another topic. Now this here is a cyst of the uracus or the uracal cyst. Now this is an umbilical part of the uracal cyst. So here you can see in the CT. So this is the picture here. There's the bladder and there's the umbilicus and you have the obliterated normal uh, uracus. Now it can form a fistula, it's known as a uracal fistula. So there will be communication between the bladder and the umbilicus. In some cases, the rest of the uh, uracus is obliterated, but there can be a cystic dilatation. It is known as uracal cyst. In some, only the umbilical portion may be open, which is a uracal sinus. So here we are talking about a uracal cyst, and this picture here shows the umbilical uracal cyst, where the cyst is extending into the umbilical skin. an example of a cyst of the embryonic remnant. Now these are the acquired varieties. So this is a retention cyst known as the mucus cyst of the lip. This here is a distension cyst that is the breast cyst. This is a hydatid cyst that is a parasitic cyst. This is an implantation dermoid and this is another example of a distension cyst that is an ovarian cyst. Now, the effects of a cyst essentially are the complications of a cyst depending on the site or the location of the cyst. So, most common as the size increases, it can compress the adjacent structures like veins, arteries and nerves. Then infection can occur, hemorrhage can occur, torsion of a pedunculated cyst can occur, for example, ovarian cyst, calcification, cachexia is seen as part of the cancer systemic effects of cancer provided it is a cystic malignant tumor of the ovary so these are the effects of a cyst so with this i stop this session thank you